This video is brought to you by the Edinburgh Watch Company, who specialise in the buying and selling of fine Swiss luxury watches in the beautiful city of Edinburgh and online at edinburghwatchcompany.co.uk. Hello and welcome back to The Watch Guys, your weekly trawl through my watch collection. The aim of this channel is to take you through different selections of watches in my collection and tell you all about them. My name's Damien, I'm a prolific watch collector. I can't stop, there's no cure for it. Please send help. This week, it's my favorite five military or special forces Rolex. Two that I own, one that I came close to owning, one that I would very much like to own, and one that I'm too scared to own. So are we all sitting comfortably? I'm gonna take you through my favorite five military or special forces Rolex. Now this is a topic close to my heart because I do own a few of them, but they are some of the most beguiling and in some cases expensive Rolexes out there to collect. Thank you very much for watching the channel. If you haven't already, please subscribe. I've got loads more really interesting watches to show you and it'd be great to have you there with me. First of all though, let's do a quick wristwatch check and under the jumper this week, I have my Grand Seiko Snowflake. That's right, it's the Titanium Snowflake, the SBGA211. This is from 2018. I imported it directly from Japan because they're a lot harder to get hold of in the UK at that time. Because it's titanium, it's very light, but if you know anything about Grand Seiko, you'll know that it's all about the accuracy, it's all about the finishing, and it's all about, in this case, that sublime snowflake dial, which is absolutely incredible. There'll be an episode on this watch coming very soon. But this week, it's all about military or special forces Rolex, a subject close to my heart. I do own a couple of them, and I do covet many of them, but because of their rarity, often the prices are ridiculous. One of the watches on this list, for example, recently came up for sale in America. It was snapped up instantly for $125,000. Ouch. But now let's crack on, and I'm gonna take you a little bit through the history of Rolex with regards to the military, and then we're gonna hit my favorite five. Now, what many people don't know is that the founder of Rolex, Hans Wilsdorf, had a special affinity with the military. During World War II, for example, many servicemen were wearing Rolex. The Ministry of Defense of the United Kingdom was looking for a watch they could use for its military and for its special forces. And it was the Submariner they very much took to their heart and started to order for use in active service. So soon after that, the reference 6538 and 5513 had military variants attached to them. And there was even a special military only reference the 5517. More recently, the involvement with Rolex and the military tends to have been where individual regiments have contacted the company to create engraved versions of popular Rolex models for their own servicemen to buy and wear. And it's those ones that I've actually managed to secure a couple of examples of, but more about that later. Okay, so the first of my favorite five Rolex military or special forces watches is one of mine. It is this. The Rolex Explorer 2 Polar Dial SAS Edition. Now I've done a whole episode on this watch, so please check that out here. This is basically a special watch created specifically for members of the Special Air Service, the SAS, the elite of special forces in the United Kingdom. Now like the SAS, there's a lot of secrecy involved here, so no one really knows how many of these babies were made. Anywhere between 500 and 1,000 is a decent bet. What you get is a standard Explorer 2 that has the SAS motto engraved on the side of the case, Who Dares Wins? And on the case back itself, you get the SAS regimental emblem. And each one of these watches also includes the enlistment number of the individual members of the SAS that receive them. So they are very special watches indeed. In any other respect, they're completely normal, but it's those two extra elements that make them super special. And this has pride of place in my collection. I'm a massive fan of the SAS. 
Anyone who saw the Iranian embassy siege in 1980 will know that the SAS is a byword for ruthless efficiency, getting the job done. Now this is the standard 216570 Rolex Explorer 2. It's got the 3187 movement in it and it's a 42 millimeter steel watch. And what I like about them is it's clearly engraved and you can trace the history right back to the regiment. And in fact, to the individual soldier. Number two on my list is perhaps the one that I want the most. It is the Rolex Sea Dweller, and it's the one given to the Italian State Police Diver Corps, the Polizia de Stato Sommersesori. Nicknamed the Polipetto because the emblem of that diving corps is an octopus, and this has the octopus on the dial of the Sea Dweller, making it the coolest Special Forces watch, I think, that there is since the Millsub. They were produced in tiny quantities, they are hellishly valuable, and they come up for sale very rarely. This is the one that came up for sale just last month in America, and it was snapped up immediately for $125,000. Reference 16600, it was made in 2008, it's got the 3135 movement inside it. Now only 78 of these watches were made. They're fully engraved, they're fully numbered, and the octopus on the dial makes them look exactly like a James Bond villain watch. Now I've got a Squale, which was endorsed by the same diving corps and has the same octopus on it, and I think that's why I bought it. The third Rolex on my list is the Mill Sub. This is a Rolex Submariner that's built to the specifications of the Royal Navy. Reference 5513. They were made between 1971 and 1979, and it was used for Navy divers and the Special Boat Service, the SBS. And like all submariners of the period, they're 39 millimeter steel watches. And they're almost mythical unicorns because to find an original one, to find one that hasn't been faked or had elements of it messed with is an almost impossible task. They're like hen's teeth or rocking horse you just cannot find them anywhere. The name Millsub is literally a conjunction of military and submariner. It's very easy to spot a Millsub because they have the letter T on the dial, just below the center hand position. The T stands for tritium, which is the radioactive material used to give luminescence. It's believed that there are about 1,200 genuine Millsubs, and these are extremely rare now because it's thought that maybe 200 of those original 1200 still survive today. A lot of them were lost in active service. What's also cool about the Millsub is that James Bond wore one in Dr. No. So with that extra cachet, it's no wonder that values of these things have soared well up to the 150,000 pound mark. And of course, where there's big money involved, you get counterfeiters, which is why the watch world is rife with fake mill subs. Anyone trying to boost the value of their 5513 sub by adding that tritium dial and counterfeiting certain elements of the hands, that is rife and it means it's very difficult to get a genuine one. So if you are looking, you better get an expert to verify every example that you potentially want to buy. Number four on my list is an Explorer or a Submariner. You can get it in both variations. And this is a watch that was commissioned by the SRR, the Special Reconnaissance Regiment. Now they have a very distinctive armored Trojan-esque helmet emblem, and that's to be found on the case back. The main one was developed in 2007, and they are individually numbered out of 139 examples. So this is a very limited watch, and it has a very cool engraving on it, hence why it's actually quite valuable. It's based on the 16570 Reference Explorer 2, and therefore it's self-winding. It's a 40 millimeter steel watch. Quite unusually, the registration card is actually listed with the regiment name, not the individual's name. Another version of this watch was created in 2017 based on the Submariner, and this was limited to 167 units. SRR Submariners and Explorers, because they are individually numbered, are rising fast in terms of value. And finally, the last one of my favorite five military watches is also one that I own, and it's also a Rolex Explorer. It's this black dial, Rolex Explorer II Apache Gunship Squadron. How cool is that? I mean, come on. Apache gunships, they are awesome helicopters. You do not want to mess with an Apache gunship and you do not want to mess with the Apache gunship 
regiment. The regiment would have had to have gone directly to Rolex to get them to create a special edition for their personnel. It was made in 2015 and inside you've got the 3187 movement and it's the standard 42 millimeter stainless steel Explorer 2. What makes this one really special? Well, it's got an actual Apache gunship on the case back. It's verified again to the soldier that received it. And the biggest reason, there are only 48 of these. So this is an incredibly limited edition Rolex. Now it's not as elaborate as the SAS edition, but that engraved Apache gunship does make it very distinctive. So there you go. Those are my favorite five Rolex military or special forces watches, the ones I love. Hopefully at some point in the future, I can get my grubby mitts on a polypetto, but it is a big ask. Of course, there are many other more significant, more interesting military watches across the board, and probably even more interesting Rolex ones. But this is my favorite five of the ones that I'm aware of or I'm looking to collect. So I hope you enjoyed this brief deep dive into my favorite five military Rolexes. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. I hope it gave you something to think about. If you like what I'm doing on The Watch Guys, please support the channel by subscribing and also on all the videos, please leave comments and likes. I read every single one and I reply to many of them. Now there will be another Watch Guys episode along with another watch from my collection next week.